Hi YouTube, today we're gonna to enter the world of the Hacking Tosh. Here we have some components in front of us that we're gonna use in our build. First of all, we have a GeForce GTX 660 from EVGA. This comes with two gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. Next we have a gigabyte motherboard. This is a Z86 XP UD3i SSD, but we'll come into all the information on that a bit later. Next we have a Series 3 Core i5 running at 3.4 gigahertz. We have some Corsair Dominator RAM. This is an eight gig set with two sticks of four. And we have a TP-Link Wireless N dual band Wi-Fi card. Okay, so what I'll do now is I'll go through the boxes in a little bit more detail so you can see some more in-depth specs on the products. Okay, so first up we have the GTX 660. As I've already mentioned, this does come with two gigabytes of GDDR5. It is a DirectX 11 card. It supports physics and 3D vision surround. Obviously you need a PCI Express 3.0 slot to run this and it is super clocked by EVGA. Now if we just have a look on the back, we can see that it supports DisplayPort, HDMI, DVI-I and DVI-D. It is a dual height card and it will support up to four displays. Next up we have the Gigabyte Z68 motherboard. This is obviously a Z68 chipset. Also on this motherboard we have a 20 gigabyte SSD. This can be used individually or as a caching engine within Windows, but obviously we're not gonna be using this for Windows. If we have a look on the rear. You can see a picture of the motherboard. We could see that it has four DDR3 slots running in dual channel mode. We have two USB 3.0 ports with headers for another two pairs. We have a PCI Express 16 slot, PCI Express 8, two PCI and three PCI single lanes. There are lots more features on this motherboard which I'm not going to go into now. But if you do want to find out more information on this motherboard and all the other components that are in this video, then please check the description below because there are links to the manufacturer's websites where you can find out more information on these products and also the supported CPU list for this motherboard. Okay, next up we have the Intel Core i5 processor. As I said earlier, this is a 3.4 gigahertz CPU. It is an LGA1155 which means it will fit the motherboard we've got, obviously. This processor supports four cores, four-way multitasking processing, Intel Turbo Boost Technology 2.0, Smart Cache, integrated memory controller, supports two-channel DDR3 memory, and it has the Intel HD Graphics 4000 on board. And if we just look at the specs here again, you can see 3.4, gigahertz, six megabytes of cache, and this will consume 95 watts of power. Next up, we have the Corsair Dominator RAM. This is an eight gigabyte set. It comprises of two sticks of four gigabytes of RAM. As you can see on the photo there, it comes with built-in heat spreaders. Next up, we have the Wi-Fi card. This is from TP-Link, and the model number is TL-WDN4800. This is a 450 megabits per second wireless N dual band PCI Express adapter. It supports wireless A, B, G, and N. It has a triple antenna and uses a PCI Express single lane. And there's just some more information there on the back. And all of these components are going to be installed into this NVIDIA case. This is actually made by Cooler Master and it is the 690 Mark II Advanced Edition. This case sports two USB 3 ports. There is an alternate version that doesn't have USB 3 ports, just USB 2 ports. On the rear of the packaging we can see that it supports water cooling. There's plenty of holes for cable management. There's mesh filters on the front and the top of the case. There's an LED green fan. Also, there's rubber stands. 
It supports top or bottom mounted radiator installation, tool free hard drive cages, and it also comes with an adapter for 2.5 or 1.8 inch hard drive or SSDs. And this case supports bottom mounted power supply. And the power supply that we're going to be using in this case is the Cooler Master 600 Watt Silent Pro, and this is a modular power supply. Okay folks, so that's pretty much all the components you're going to be using for this build. As I mentioned earlier in the video, all the links to the manufacturer's website will be in the description below. And if you do wish to purchase any of these, I'll provide Amazon links as well. Please stay tuned for the next video in this series where we'll be assembling all of these components. And as usual, thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe and share this video with everyone you know.